Okay, the last presentation of the day is Jim Linton from OWL, and uh, Jim, the stage is yours. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thank you for sticking around. I'm reminded of something my thesis advisor told me in 19, uh, 1988, which is always take the last spot. There'll never be another scientist to poke holes at your data after you're done. So I'm happy to be able to finish the presentations today, and I'd ask you to uh, take a few minutes and um, uh, shift your thinking a bit from therapeutics and cell therapies and, and uh, all the fine presentations about how to cure disease to how to actually generate the cells that will be used to cure the disease. And this is what OWL Biomedical is all about. The company is a young, uh, very young company, probably the youngest company here presenting. It's only 10 people. It's been around for 18 months. Uh, we've raised six and a half million dollars of money, uh, have several grants both in the U.S. and Europe, and I'm happy to tell you we've just launched our first product, which is called the Nanosorter, which I'll talk to you about uh, today. So uh, maybe to set the stage a little bit, I'd like to talk about the ongoing evolution in the cell therapy world as we see it as platform people, as Greg Lucille called it. This is the, uh, the notion of moving from discovery research to translational and clinical research to commercialization. And because we come from manufacturing mentalities, we, we always think about how we can make the products in a way that is uh, cost effective, robust and reproducible, and also uh, compliant with the, the regulatory agency as we head down the road. And it's very interesting as you look at what's going on in the cell therapy space. There are those doing allogeneic production, there are those doing autologous production, but many of those are using specific markers or methods to find these cells that are not truly compliant with the FDA. And, and uh, some of the examples really revolve around things that have come out of the past technologies like fax. It's been around for a long time, very reliable, uh, very specific. But as you move from the discovery phase through translational uh, into the commercial phases, it's really not compatible. Uh, it's aerosol com uh, conforming. It is um, uh, not reproducible. It's dangerous. It's expensive and most importantly, it's very complicated. So we did a very uh, in-depth market research study and uh, to make a long story short, what we found out was that as you look uh, to the clinicians and the regulatory agencies, there is uh, an emergence of a number of features which are gonna be required to make a number of cell therapies uh, feasible and those include the ease of use because these things have to be easy enough to use in a, a production environment to uh, have low cost uh, low quality, or I should say low cost, low uh, education laborers conduct it. It has to have a throughput that's sufficient that you can churn enough samples per day to treat the number of patients that require it. And then very importantly, it's gotta be safe for both the user and the sample so it can go into the clinic and, uh, and meet the end user requirements without jeopardizing the operator. And so this particular trend has forced us as OWL to think about how we could create a disruptive technology that could take advantage of things like facts but present it in a way that would solve those issues. And so that's what OWL Biomedical is about. And uh, this uh, really was framed in the final set of answers that came from the market researchers, which uh, asked for what would an ideal system be for cell therapy, and it would be one that could produce uh, cells with high purity, high yield, and high viability, allow for very specific isolation, which is typically multi-parametric isolation, something that could have rapid turnaround times where these samples could be processed in the tens to hundreds a day, uh, small to large volumes, so you could process everything from biopsy samples where you're getting small numbers of, uh, of uh, stem cells through to bone marrow samples where you're getting large numbers, be friendly with the uh, CGMP compliance requirements and have a, a cost of operation and cost of acquisition that was quite high. So to that end, we developed the nanosorter, and uh, I'll say up front, we use the same basic detection principles as a fax machine, which are fluorescence detection of cells, but we package it and present it in a very different way. It's a benchtop device, uh, 24 or so inches wide, 30 inches tall, 18 inches deep, and it implements and uses a cartridge-based approach where the cells are sterilely introduced to a cartridge as a heterogeneous population. The cartridge is introduced to the system, the cells are processed through the system and end up in a receptacle within the cartridge uh, where you would then remove the sorted or desired cells from uh, the cartridge for reimplantation re or in, in uh, some cases into cell culture. And at the heart of the system is, uh, oops, I'll excuse me, is this little uh, device right here, which is a microchip produced in semiconductor fabrication technology. It's the fastest valve in the world, it's a mechanical valve, it's magnetically actuated. And it's situated in this cartridge such that 
uh, when a, a cell comes by the interrogation point with a laser, a magnetic pulse is fired, the valve opens, the cell gets redirected like a train to a different track which is your collection track. Now the beauty of this from a commercial standpoint is there is nothing, and I mean nothing in the world, that's had more money invested in uh, manufacturing, reproducibility, reliability, low cost of goods than semiconductors. And so these chips will cost on the order of a dollar a piece to manufacture. They'll cost $20 million to make the first one. But from now on, uh, we can produce these things at very low cost. Uh, they're also very compatible with sterilization techniques. So we can build these cartridges, have these chips in them, and deliver cartridges shrink-wrapped and sterile so that people can introduce their cells and process them without ever having the cells see the outside world. So um, I'll try and play this video. There may be some audio here. If not, I'll try and uh, I'll cover it for you. But this is an animation of how the inside of the chip actually works. So what happens here basically is the cells are driven with positive pressure into this chip. Uh, the cells go by, the purple line there is a laser interrogation point, it can be one, two, or three lasers. And very simply off the chip a magnet is fired, it pulls the valve open or closed, and it essentially drives the cells down the collection channel. Now there are a couple of really cool things about this. One is this is the fastest valve in the world, they cycle 30,000 times a second. So for people that are doing crazy things like sorting bovine sperm to separate male from female, they've got to sort tens of thousands of sperm a second for rare cell sorting uh, that most of us are talking about here, not so much of an issue. But there are a few neat uh, features here. One is there's no sheet fluid like a fax machine, uh, which later on you'll see is pretty nice. Your sample comes out undiluted and you can actually sort and sort again. If you want to drive yourself to the ultimate purity, you can do that. Uh, because the fluidic channels are small enough to uh, handle very low volumes of cells and at very small dead volumes, you can process 50,000, 5,000, or 50 million cells. Um, you also have, as we unexpectedly found, a very low stress on the cells. And so viability is one of the big advantages of the system. Fax, magnetic beads, all are very tough on cells until your ultimate viable cell yields go down because the cells get beaten up. And I'll show you later that's not the case here. And then the, the cool thing, of course, is you, know, you run the sample, you pull your cells, and you process them. It's just great. So the, the operation is really very simple. There's a sterile septum that resides on the cartridge right here. Your cells get introduced with a syringe. The cells populate this chamber right here, which is now colored in yellow. At the bottom of the chamber is a magnetic stir bar. You put the cartridge into the device. The stir bar starts turning, keeping the cells monodispersed and in suspension. A piston comes down that matches the geometry of that chamber. And on the top of this chamber right here is a flexible sterile membrane. And it starts to compress that membrane down. It drives the cells through this chip where a laser is interrogating it. And then there are two chambers. There's a large one here, which is the waste cell chamber. And then there's a small one right here, which is where your sort cells come out at the end of the sort. And so you can, in this case, use a syringe if you want to to pull your cells back out. Pretty simple. Um, the, the beauty of this from a production standpoint is the chip itself never changes, but the cartridge is eminently flexible. So you can make and design cartridges to match specific applications. If you have a 30 milliliter bone marrow sample, we can make a 30 mil input cartridge, uh, input chamber for the cartridge. Uh, we have a 10 mil we're using now for adopting Q-cell immunotherapy up in Seattle. We have a 1.5 mil that's being used for biopsy sample processing, and the flexibilities are quite enormous. Um, we also can do some other cool things for process development. We've got a, a version of this which has a removable uh, insert. So instead of being s completely sterile, you can put Eppendorf tubes or you can have a fractionation collection vehicle at the bottom of the thing so you can remove samples during a, a time course study. So the chip is fixed, the cartridge is very flexible. And of course the, the, the key for us was to try and make this thing easy to use. Has anybody, I imagine some of you have used fax machines. They require very sophisticated operators. They're very finicky. It's difficult even with the same fax machine moved in two different places to get the same result. So the goal here was to make an easy interface for people that would be technician level operators where they could implement push button sorting. And that's not always the case, but that's the goal, to come up with simple optimized protocols where you can push the protocol button, it'll calibrate, validate, and then run the sample. And it, it's, it's very nice because unlike fax, we've got a simple optical calibration where the, once the cartridge is in, 
There's a fiducial spot on the, on the chip, which optically lines the chip up with the laser. You can actually see the valve uh, right here. And then once it's aligned, the system automatically starts to operate and just presents the user, user with a real-time sort count readout, as well as the, uh, the data of the number of cells sorted. Now, um, we also appreciate there are other people that are more sophisticated, and so we designed an export user interface here, which is a little bit more like that for those that want to go back and say, I want a cell that is you know, with this size, this intensity, this number of parameters, and so it's designed for either uh, operational uh, level of sophistication at this point. Uh, the, the beauty of this, I think, from our view, is how it's situated relative to other purification technologies, and that is that things like fax are wonderful, highly specific. Things like magnetic beads offer one parameter, but they're very large processing volumes. Uh, what we're finding is that uh, people are migrating away from things like dilute creation where they want specificity or limiting dilution, which are too labor intensive. The problem is there's no system that brings together the volume processing competencies of max or magnetic beads with the specificity of fax in an easy to use platform. And so this is really the, the objective of a nano server, which is to bring that, if you will, the child of fax and max together for the next generation cell therapy. And so I have scads of data I could present to you. I just thought I'd bore you with one data set. This is recently generated from uh, Dr. Cassian Yee's lab up at the Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center. And if you're familiar with the work they're doing, they've published it in uh, a number of uh, uh, pretty high profile uh, journals. This is work using uh, antigen primed T cells to fight metastatic melanoma in stage four melanoma patients. And uh, it's a protocol that's been shown to work very well. They get a response rate of about 60%. Uh, so these are patients that are usually on pretty short leash, and they have got uh, now, I think, 18 patients treated, and at least eight of those patients are surviving three years out. However, the problem is it costs them $100,000 and takes them 75 days to process the sample to reinfuse into a patient. So it's kind of a bummer if you have stage four metastatic uh, melanoma. You, you have to wait 75 days. So with this platform, now what we're showing is we can process these cells in 20 days, and we can cut the cost by about 60%. So we're not there yet, but we're getting to the point where this could become a scalable therapeutic option for people. And so for those that have you know, failed chemotherapy and are in the final phases of metastatic melanoma, there could be some hope. And so this is now before the FDA with Ka uh, Cassian Yee to try and have this be the first site uh, for our platform to be used in human settings. One of the most uh, interesting things about the platform, and it shocked us, is that we can run the cells through this thing and it's pretty remarkable, no matter what cell you run through, it comes out nigh on the same viability as it went in. There's really no other cell purification platform I'm aware of that can say that. And so for people who are interested in yield being important, meaning viable cell yield, cells that actually do what you want them to do and are functional, this is turning out to be a very important point. And so we're in discussions with a number of uh, commercial partners now that uh, ironically for us, we didn't expect to see this as one of the biggest uh, advantage uh, points. And then finally, as I said earlier, one of the things that may be most relevant for the folks in, uh, in cell therapy where larger samples are really important in terms of processing half a billion to a billion cells. On a fax machine now, this is days worth of work. And I know if Ed were here, uh, Ed uh, Steele from Aldogen, he would tell you this is what it takes them to do it. But because we have no sheath fluid, we can kind of take advantage of what was done in uh, fractional distillation chemistry, which is we can do a very fast, dirty sort which means we can take 15 million cells per mil in 10 minutes and process half a billion cells in the span of an hour and a half. And what we do is we just want to make sure we get every cell that's a positive cell, and we take it from 0.01%, for example, or in this case 0.1%, to say a 20% purity. That debulks the sample. We then go through a second sort in 15 minutes, which purifies the remaining cells to 90 plus percent, in this case 98%. And so you can, on this platform, very readily process half a billion to a billion cells in a few, a few hours. And you couple that with the capability of taking the cartridge out and plugging in the next patient, and this now becomes a feasible means to start processing uh, adequate numbers of patients now to do clinical studies and hopefully uh, commercial applications as well. So finally, uh, just uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, we think this is a pretty exciting platform. We're a small company, but we think we're going to make a big difference. Uh, we think this is uh, living on the, on the shoulders or building on the shoulders of giants, taking facts to a clinically relevant platform. Uh, it's a, a very unique 
approach. It's sterilizable, it's disposable, it gives high purity, high yield, and high throughput. Um, it's easy to use, which we think will make it commercially friendly. Uh, the turnaround time, of course, gives you the processivity for uh, a business perspective that's important. And uh, you know, for those of you interested, of course, we're, we're now starting to sell systems. So if anybody wants a manager, they'll be here uh, favorably. So thank you for your patience and uh, happy presentation.